In today's video, we're gonna go over some creepy TikTok conspiracies. Let's get into it. You know the movie Poltergeist? Oh yeah. Real human skeletons were used as props to save money. I have heard that. You see that? That's literally a real person that she's right next to. And he said that Poltergeist wasn't unique in this practice. Historical precedents include the original Pirates of the Caribbean ride at Disneyland, Dawn of the Dead and the real skeletons were employed for their cost effectiveness compared to high quality replicas or their added authenticity. Oh my Hilarious. Disney? Every parent who was like, it's not real. It's not real. <gasps> yeah, I know. Wrong. <laughs> it's real. It's, it's real. real. That's so real, dude. No, mom, why do I see ghosts? It's talking to me. That's Scary. crazy. That's pretty messed up. I have heard about the poltergeist skeletons being real. I had no clue Disney was doing that as well. It also makes me wonder if they're not intentionally using human remains as some kind of sacrificial piece. It might be some dark magic. I saw like a werewolf creature as a kid. That's the only thing I've ever it took me a long time to put it together. That that's what I saw. And you're fully confident in what you saw. Mm, yeah. This it's, was California. California. Yeah. And my parents' house, it was like a, a screen door that went out from like a sunroom. I was probably like seven, six, seven years old. Yeah. And I saw this thing and I, I remember looking at it multiple times and it was like in the window. It was kind of grinning at me. It had this like red eyes and I was like, this is not going away. When I looked, and I screamed and ran told my parents, but you know, the, the reason I remember it though, because I would I would run from one room to the next for for years after that, and I wouldn't look out that window. But then I was listening to Sasquatch shows, and people were saying that they see the dog man, the dog man, the dog man. I'm like, what the heck is the dog man? I know what the Sasquatch yeah. is. What is what is the dog man? Yeah. And then I'm like, oh my gosh, that's what you saw. I saw the same thing. What is the dog man? It's the werewolf. Does it walk up on yeah. two yeah. legs? Yeah, it does both. Sometimes it runs off. Is it like the Harry it, Potter? The blue Kind of. It's just your classic werewolf. Most of them have the werewolf face. Right. Werewolf now, would it, pretty legs. terrifying. I could only imagine as a six or seven year old, that would be traumatizing. I had an uncle that used to scare me in the hallway of my grandma's house, and it always made me so afraid to go past the hallway, even if he wasn't home, because I was afraid that something was going to jump out and scare me. So I know that that has to be some form of trauma or PTSD to see something outside like that that looks scary. Now one thing I will have to say, I'm not really a big believer in werewolves. I am more of a believer in Bigfoot than I am a werewolf. Let me know in the comments if you guys believe in werewolves or not, or if you even believe in Bigfoots. Big feet? Big fi? Whatever the plural term is for multiple Bigfoot. This is fucking weird, man. Jamie Dimon, the CEO of JP Morgan Chase, officially announced that he will be stepping down by 2025. And here's why that's really, really sketchy. Because this man right here, AKA Klaus Schwab himself, said that he will also be stepping down by 2025. As you can see, before I go any further, the Bank of America analysts forecast that Diamond will step down in late 2025 or 2026, more specifically 2025. Now, as you can see, like it says here, like I stated, Klaus Schwab will be stepping down by 2025. This is literally on the WEF website, people. Recession and automation changes our future of work, but there are jobs coming. The robot revolution will create 97 million new jobs, but communities most at risk from disruption will need support from businesses and governments. And in 2025, analytical thinking, creativity, and flexibility are among the top skills needed. With data and artificial intelligence, content creation, and cloud computing the top emerging professions. So are they confessing that AI is going to be taking over by 2025? Because, God, this was from the WEF themselves. AI will replace some 85 million jobs by 2025. And by 2030, the number of jobs lost to automation in the U.S. will supposedly reach 73 million. That's Forbes. And also by 2030, supposedly, AI will be responsible for North America's 14% boost in GDP. That's PWC. Is this not sketchy to anybody else? Because for those two individuals, as big as their names are, to step down, coincidentally by the same time that they're saying this is going to take place, is huge. It does make it seem like they might be running for their bunkers. And I really like the idea of artificial intelligence being useful in the working society, but to take people's jobs, that's just a shame. And I understand on the business aspect of it because the business owners are trying to save money, I guess, but if it's ruining the lives of other people for you to just collect a little bit more money when you're already extremely wealthy, is it really worth it, you know? Because in the long run, if robots take over all of the workforce, who is going to have money to be able to purchase the products that the robots are making you know it it just kind of makes me wonder if they're pushing us into a corner to make us live a lifestyle that they want us to live 
They might give us a check to live freely, but it's going to be limited and it's going to have heavy rules that follow it as well. I really hope it does not come down to that kind of world. But the more and more I see it, the more it's looking to be that way. Let me know what you guys think about this, because I have a feeling we're going to go downhill really quick once robots start taking over and AI. Did the Vatican update their guidelines on supernatural occurrences because using their Lucifer telescope, they found something out there in the Arizona desert? Now, to keep it a buck with you, this telescope is no longer named Lucifer. They actually changed the name to Lucy in 2012 when people lost their minds. But the Vatican would name a telescope Lucifer. And people lost their minds that the Vatican would even put a telescope on Mount Graham. Why? Because Mount Graham is considered sacred to the Apache people that live around it. And people even believe there is a portal located on this mountain that you can go and speak to God and deities live there. So why did the Vatican put this large ass telescope on this very sacred mountain? Well, this area is also a hot spot for UFO sightings. Let's look at it. As of February of this year, Arizona as a whole has had about 5,000 UFO sightings with Mount Graham being located right in the middle. That's where the telescope is, Mount Graham. I've said it once, I'll say it again. The Vatican knows about alien life because they have that big ass telescope on that mountain and these are the kind of lights people report seeing. So if anyone's gonna be catching it, it's the Vatican. So could all the changes they made to supernatural procedures just be in preparation for what they see coming already? That's pretty interesting. And I remember hearing about that telescope being called Lucifer and I always wondered why would they call it that that's such a menacing name and everyone already knows that the image behind that name is really bad so why would you call it something like that you know and then the change the name to Lucy just to say oh yeah you're, we changed it to make you happy and it's not even that different of a name but while watching this I got to thinking what if this is where they're practicing project blue beam type of technology what if, because this is the sacred land where there's gods and you can speak to other deities and things like that, what if they're using that premise to create holograms and to trick the world into thinking that they're seeing aliens or deities and things like that? It's a pretty interesting theory. Hey, if you haven't done so already, go ahead and like the video and subscribe to the channel. I only ask once per video and I make a video like this almost every day. And to everyone that's subscribed and or watching, Thank you so much for being subscribed, and thank you so much for watching. I got a ghost on fucking camera. I got a fucking ghost on camera. I fucking knew it, dude. I've been having the worst fucking paranormal experiences ever since I moved into this fucking apartment. I don't know if it's because I messed with the Ouija board a couple months ago, or- Oh my fucking god! I, yeah, I packed my bags and I'm going to my fucking mom's. I'm never going back in there again. Yeah! I was making content for my TikTok this morning, and I was editing, and I found something! <laughs> I found something peeking in behind me in my bedroom. First, I thought it was like an orb or something like passing through my phone, but like sent it to my sister too. And she's like, what the fuck is that? That's guys, nobody was home. Okay, I was <gasps> I'm obviously freaking the fuck out. <sighs> Bro, guys, y'all never fucking mess with Ouija boards. Anyways, here's the fucking video. Let me know what you guys think. The cutest little sample of yesterday. Dang, I didn't expect it to be such a short video to show the ghost. To me, that really looked like someone was in her apartment. If this is not a hoax, she might not want to go back into that apartment because someone else might be there if no one else was supposed to be there. Let me know what you guys think. Do you think this was a hoax or do you think that this is a legit video? She does seem pretty spooked in the car. A machine that lets you lucid dream while awake. The Dream Machine. In 1958, author Brian Geisen had a profound experience while traveling on a bus. As he looked out the windows, the sun's light flickering through the trees along the city streets put him in a trance. Geisen described the experience as an overwhelming flood of intensely bright patterns and supernatural colors exploded behind my eyelids. A multi-dimensional kaleidoscope rolling out through space. I was swept out of time. I was out in a world of infinite numbers. The vision stopped abruptly as we left the trees. This inspired Geisen to create the Dream Machine, a stroboscopic flicker device designed to generate vivid visual stimuli. The device seeks to induce a similar transcendental experience like the one Geisen had on the bus that day. Operating the Dream Machine often leads to a trans-like state where users can experience hallucinations without the use of psychoactive substances. Geisen believed that the Dream Machine could free people from the doling effects of television 
which he viewed as transforming society into passive consumers with lowered mental engagement. Very much like some of those watching this clip. The machine consists of a cylinder with slits on the sides, a light bulb in the center, mounted on a record turntable spinning at 78 rotations per minute. This speed is crucial because it produces light rays at a frequency that align with the alpha brain waves associated with states of relaxation. The only thing that I would have to say about this device is if you have epilepsy, please be careful around it. But I have heard that strobing lights in the eyes can actually cause like minor hallucinations and that's pretty neat. I personally have never really tried it. Have any of you tried a device like this or and does it actually work? Let me know. Every culture, they have their own narrative of like the fallen angels, basically. Right, sure. so star yeah. people or it's the Anunnaki. But the Anunnaki, like one of their things was like gold mining. Right. Sure. So they came to mine gold. I think it's interesting, right? Because gold's interesting because it has, it has a lot of value uh, for humanity for us, right? And it's because it's rare. But from a technological standpoint, if you ever look into what gold does, it's fascinating, right? You actually need gold for technology. Same way that we need uh, silicon. And it, it's part of some of the more advanced technological things we do. There is all these narratives across civilizations of these in higher beings, or, you know, angels, if we will. That's just a job title. But when they, when they fell, they taught humanity how to do stuff, technology, how to build, how to, how to do metalworking, how to do architecture, how to cut roots. And you, it, there's a whole list if you go down through it. And ancient man wasn't stupid. I think sometimes we get in this paradigm that, that they were dumb. Well, they call it the golden age, yeah. which is interesting, right? Yeah. And you have the bronze yeah. age. So these ages are connected to different metals. Yeah. And I think the golden age probably, to me, it seems like that was the, the height of technology in history. Mm. I think that the technology they possessed then isn't like anything we understand. That's Beyonce. That's a clip from her concert where allegedly a demon took her over. And that's the moment where the demon releases her, allegedly, just what you can see on the video. I'm going to show you the clip and we break it down piece by piece so you can see the exact moment where it goes on her and you can see the exact moment where it lifts off and it's all on film. And when you play the video fast, you see her transform into what you see, which is pretty freaky on its own. But then you see, and bear with me because I slow it down, I bring it forward a few times, but you see on the corner of the video, the green of the hair, there'll be a little arrow pointing or if not, whatever, right there. And you can see where the demon or where the thing covers her. I'll let you look at it. You can see the energy go on her and go off of her. Right there, the green that whips on the corner. From nowhere, shines up, hair whips around. And you can see it lift off in a few seconds. Right there. You see that green energy and all that stuff just lift up right up here from the corner of her hair and then just come right off of her. I know I'm one of those pointing people, but just bear with me because I really, it's important you see that it's an energy field, an entire thing that encompasses her, takes her over, and then releases her. It's pretty freaky. Be mindful, though, you may not believe in the spirit world or in spirits or entities, or you might not believe in God or whatever. The people up here who perform for you daily do, and they're using these things as energy siphoning tools to take from you to steal from you and they worship things that are malevolent call it and label it what you want but this is what's going on i have to admit that does look really off-putting it does look like she is mildly possessed by something do you really think that all these pop stars and artists are out there really doing all these demonic acts for fame i mean i get it having money is nice and it's it's comforting to be able to live without stressing about bills and what you're going to eat next. But is it really worth the potential act of losing a soul and going to a bad place at the end of your life? Or do these people even not have to worry about that because they're on a constant repeat cycle where they have a never ending soul cycle where they're just constantly coming back and becoming famous over and over again, which is another interesting theory to talk about. There's so many questions I have to this. What is Holly? Holly is a safe space. 
where actors and creatives can congregate and share their ideas. They can grow as a community. They can look after each other's needs and respect each other's rights. Holly is a safe zone where your dreams can come true without you having to trade them because you need to pay your rent. Holly is where you go to when you're ready to accomplish your dream. It's the bridge into tomorrow. Get there. Come join us. It's going to be a great ride. We're going to change the world. It's much more than that. It's a movement. So let me get this straight. He has a business that's called Holly. And is it a place for creatives or geniuses? I have never heard of this before. This is my first time actually hearing about this. So I might look a little bit into this and see what this is all about. If any of you are familiar with what he's talking about, please leave a comment down below on letting me know because I'm kind of curious in what all people do around Terrence. He's definitely got a special mind and a unique view on life. And I have nothing against him. In fact, a lot of what he says I find really interesting. So I like to keep up with Terrence Howard. Even if he says a bunch of things that confuses me, it still fascinates me. So ever since the solar eclipse, y'all, there have been sighting of these odd oddly looking dark jellyfish in the sky y'all um these dementor looking beings from harry potter this right here was taken in colorado just yesterday y'all check this out the guy said there was no wind or anything out but he caught this look at this y'all here's another angle of it here it is just flying around like a kite like what do you think is what is this about y'all look at that y'all this thing was also seen on television on the Weather Channel, y'all. Did y'all see that? Did y'all see that? And all the plasma that's going around, the blue dark sky. Look, right there, look. So look, the Dementors from Harry Potter, what are they doing here? It seems ever since the solar eclipse, right, we have been seeing these different type of energies onto this earth that we have never seen before, like these dark energies, dark clouds dark tornadoes the water has changed as well and now we're seeing these things from harry potter into our world yeah we literally have crossed another timeline y'all a few months ago now i seen another video of one of those weird looking octopus things floating in the sky it looks like a kite of some sort it has to be if not that's a terrifying looking sky creature i'm really leaning on it being some kind of kite and the thing that swooped across the camera that kind of looked like a bird flying to me so i'm not gonna really go over that one too much but the thing in the sky that looks like a giant octopus that one intrigues me so if anyone knows what that is leave a comment down below I don't think there's enough money in the world that you could pay me to do something like that. That is intense. And I don't know what the purpose is of these people doing this, if it's their job or what it is, or if they're just truly exploring a sewer area. They definitely got some big berries to be able to do something like that because that is not going to happen for me. <laughs> just seeing them slide under there on their back kind of gives me mild anxiety. But I'm not going to lie, I enjoy watching this content. It's really fun to me. This boy was born again. This is Billy who was born in the south coast of Australia. 
He was born back in 2015, and once he was born and started speaking, things got a bit strange. Now, we know kids say some crazy things sometimes. They read one thing, they see one thing, they exaggerate it, and, you know, it becomes like a reality. But this? I'm not sure. So, at the age of two, he started referring to his sons, and his parents were just like, your sons? Go, yeah, my sons. And they were like, bit weird, but okay. But one day, he pulled out a postcard with the late princess Diana on it. He looked at his parents and said, look, daddy, that was when I used to be a princess. What? They lived in Australia. He'd never seen her before. It was years after she passed away. He'd never seen anything really about the royal family. He was only three years old. But again, he even fully described the exterior and interior of Balmoral Castle with never even hearing it. He said, yeah, I used to go here, this place here. And he fully described how it was furnished inside and everything correct. They looked it up and they were like, what? And again, even crazier, one day they were watching a documentary about the whole incident and he looked and he said, why did they kill me that day? But if he wasn't Princess Diana... How the hell did he get all of this information at three years old? It's insane. But yeah, I have no idea. I'm just as confused as you are. So let me know in the comments down below your thoughts right now. I have been seeing this topic on TikTok for the past couple of days, so I'm just adding it in here because it is really interesting. The simple fact that he's able to recall everything that's in the palace, especially at a young age. Let me know what you guys think about this topic. I think it's really interesting. Do you personally know anyone that claims that they've had a past life? If so, share it in the comments because I love hearing about these stories. All right, guys, I'm gonna go ahead and end this video here. I know this video was a little short, and I'm trying to change it up a little bit so you can see me watching the clips as I'm watching them because normally I just have a full screen of the TikTok. But being that the TikTok screen size does not really change with having my face in the frame, I just thought that I'd just slide it over a little bit and put me on screen just in case people want to see me react to the videos that I'm watching. To me, it just makes it seem like we're all a part of the video watching these TikToks together. So let me know what you thought about this style. I haven't done it in a long time. I used to do this in the past. And as always, if you enjoyed any of these clips, links are in the description down below. And with that being said, have a good day.